Hi everyone, it's Angela Prophet. I hope that you guys are having a great day. And I want to get started with seven tips on how to avoid email jail. And if somebody will just type in the chat and let me know that you guys can hear me okay. I want to make sure that everybody can hear me that's on. Everybody else, be sure that you are muted so we don't get any feedback on this webinar. Can anybody hear me? Dimitri, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. All right. All right, well, we're going to get started. So first, congratulations for taking an hour out of your crazy busy day to be on this webinar. I promise it will change your life. It did for me. So first, I'm going to show you my top tips on how to crush email and focus on the right task because there's so many distractions these days. We have to learn to focus. And we're going to talk about the three commandments, systems, tools, and processes. We're going to talk about how to prioritize your email and triage your email, which means just another word for priority. And then how to keep spam out, out of your inbox. This is one of my favorite things that keeps my inbox very, very clean. And again, prioritizing. And if you stay till the end of the webinar, uh, we have a free gift for you. So be sure that you stay all the way through the webinar. I promise the whole way through, it'll be extremely valuable information. And a lot of you that signed up, I know you already, and thank you for attending another webinar. But for those of you who don't know me, my name is Angela Prophet. I'm an event and productivity coach and consultant. And I've been in the wedding and event industry going on 15 years now. And over the years, I've done lots of things, and including planning an event, events, but also helping other businesses grow and scale. And I've had the opportunity to be part of lots of coaching, mentor classes, and mastermind classes. And I really am trying to bring tools to our industry to help you guys better be more productive and more profitable in your businesses. And I'll just tell you, I've done some things right and I've done some things wrong, which I call opportunities. So don't feel bad. Like I promise I've personally been in your shoes where email completely controlled my life. And this is why I wanted to share this with you all because by putting these things in place, it completely not only changed my life personally and professionally, but it really helped me in my business. And so I did get help. I sound like I was in a mental hospital for email because I worked in a mental hospital. Um, and then I surrounded myself with the right people and I invested in working on my business instead of in my business all the time. And so some of the things that I did wrong, I used to answer email literally 24 seven. I would click on it probably 500 times a day. And it was just a constant distraction. Like I couldn't focus. And again, it was really controlling my life. Like I would sit at the dinner table and email people, which my parents would get on to me and that's rude. And now I totally get it. But the first seven years of business, that's kind of how I operated until I really understood that I needed to get help. And today, my other presenter that's joining me is Dimitri. And Dimitri, are you there? Yeah. Do you want to let him know a little bit about yourself? Sure thing. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I'm, um, you know, I've, I've been on this, uh, the Sandbox team since, uh, for the last six years, since we started the company. And, um, you know, prior to that, I spent, let's see, eight years at uh, Overture and we got bought by Yahoo um, and did a couple of other things, uh, another startup after that. And, uh, yeah, so for the last six years, we've been helping people stop drowning in email. That's awesome. And I'm sure that you could share a few things that you've done right versus wrong throughout your entrepreneurship journey. Oh boy. Um, yeah, the, the, the definitely more wrong stuff. I'm happy to talk about that. <laughs> what would you say is one of your number one tools that you've learned so far from, or what you thought was wrong? Uh, yeah. Uh, what I know was wrong. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Um, there's so much. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, focusing on I think focusing on the right problems. Um, so making what one of my my you know, my first startup was 
a problem that didn't exist. And, and so, uh, or, you know, it was kind of like creating a problem and then trying to solve it. Um, so that was like, that was one of the first lessons. Um, so with, with Sandbox, it's really interesting because it's, it's a problem that really every, well, most people have. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was a really kind of an interesting uh, uh, change. It was like, oh wow, you know, this is actually something people want. Yeah, and it's something that we all need. And so today, like, I used to do it the hard way, and then now I know that there's an easy way to help control email. And so today I'm going to share my experiences and what I've been doing to control email. And just, I have to say that you've got to implement something and stick to it. And so I call it Repotty Train Your Brain. Um, for those of you who have kids, you know what potty training is like. I don't have kids, but my sister has four of them, and so I've been part of the potty training process, and that's literally what it's like. Um, and then as far as mistakes go, like I see that as opportunities for growth. So it's not necessarily the bad way, but I'm going to show you the easy way today. And this, this is a little bit different. I know some of the software products that I use and that I've talked about before um, are a little bit more cumbersome. Today, this is so easy, like it, a five-year-old could use this, um, but a lot of people just don't know about it, and it, say, it has saved me so much time. In fact, later I'm going to share with you guys a case study. Um, this is probably why Sane, Sanebox was like, oh, we should do a webinar with these people because they deal with a lot of email, oh my gosh. Um, and again, you just don't know what you don't know until someone shares a better way. So I'm going to jump into the tips really quick, and these are my top seven that I live by for email communication. And so you've got to look at where you're spending your time and how you're prioritizing. And these are things that they just don't teach us in business school. Like I went through an 18 month program in the Entrepreneur Center with the Catalyst program and I learned all of this stuff. And so those of us who are planners and designers and entrepreneurs, we're constantly being pulled in a gazillion directions. And so make sure that you use your calendar and you live by your calendar. Of course, we have to be flexible at times when you're a business owner, but really prioritizing on your calendar and using your calendar is important. So what that means for email is check it at certain times during the day and don't keep clicking on it every single five minutes and dear God, turn your notifications off. And if you don't know how to turn your notifications off, please send me a message and I will show you. All right, tip two, um, you've got to set boundaries and you've got to tell your clients. And again, you have to stick to it. It's like body training. And so the first seven years I was in business, I still worked in healthcare, I still taught gymnastics and I planned wedding and events on the side, more for fun, not so much for a business. Um, but I didn't really set any boundaries. Like clients would text and email at like two and three in the morning and I would kind of roll my eyes at it, but I never set boundaries. I never told them my office hours are X or I would just shouldn't respond. Like most people should be sleeping um, if you're on central time. And um, so I started to really communicate more with my clients and letting them know um, you know, office hours are this, I am flexible, especially if you have an emergency, but you've got to set boundaries. And it's amazing how things changed when I actually started to communicate my expectations to my clients. And so I stopped emailing people at two and three in the morning and actually started to set some boundaries. And I don't like to sleep, and I know a lot of you probably don't like to sleep either um, if you're a crazy busy entrepreneur, but for health reasons, we have to have it. All right, tip three. So again, communicate this to your clients. Um, you've got to make some time, <laughs> free time, it's like, what's that, right? Um, but you've got to make some time to work on your business and building it and instead of always in your business, meaning working with your clients constantly, yes, that's important, but you've got to set apart time to do things to grow your business at least once a week, spend two hours doing something. I try to spend one day a week on growing the business and building something. For example, this month, building this webinar was one of my goals to help other businesses. All right, tip four, surround yourself with the right people. And so we use personality profiling tests in the company to make sure that we're hiring the right people. And so those of you who've heard me talk about True Colors before, we use True Colors. It's something that I went to school for to be a facilitator. And I learned about it working in mental health because the 32 assessments we did on the patients, 
True Colors was the only one that they truly would open up to me. And there's four colors, and so there's gold, blue, green, and blue. So gold is super organized, very type A, very accountable, and so surrounding myself with people like that who I can count on to look at email and answer email and triage email for me. We actually do something called the Daily Bullet where I have someone that, that looks at email that's part of her kind of full-time job and at the end of the day she sends me one email of everything I need to know and then any questions that I need to answer so that she can get back with the client the following day. And then we also use the flag system so that if there's something that I need to attend to quickly, she'll flag it red so that I can look at that and personally respond to it. Um, and it's really good to let your clients know that, that you're not, I'm not a one woman show or one man show. It's, it's good to, to find people that have strengths in areas where A, you're not good at it or B, you just plain don't like doing it. All right, tip five. So, how to avoid doing the same thing over and over? Um, I can't stand doing the same thing over and over. And when we work with a lot of clients who are doing the same thing, such as getting married, um, even though every client is different and everything is unique and customized to that client's personality, it's still the same process and it's still the same strategy. And they still have the same questions. And so, we have on our we've been using our blog as a resource for brides and grooms and couples to go and type their questions so they're not emailing us and it usually takes about eh, seven times where a client will email and ask a question and we'll respond and say um, if that answers on the blog just type it into the search function we don't answer it because then that forces them to go to the blog and then what happens, it starts to potty train them that, oh, I have a question. Instead of emailing me, they can find that answer on our blog. And if we don't have an answer, we'll go and do a blog about it so that we're not answering the same thing over and over. The number one thing we get is, what's a good, good what are good things to put in welcome boxes for out-of-town guests? Well, if it's going to be in Nashville, there's this great place that has all these local Nashville products, and I want my clients to know about it, and of course I want to help them, but all that information is on our blog, so we're not answering email. So that's another tip that we have really, really decreased our emails by putting answers on the blog. And I have had some um, planners ask me, like, well, do you want everybody seeing that? Which I don't really care, but there are some ways that you can have um, password protect your website and your answers and have like a closed forum for your clients or your vendors. So that's something that you can think about too. Okay, tip six. Again, I keep saying it over and over and over, potty train your brain. And you've got to work on potty training your clients. I don't mean to sound um, like a child, but sometimes when people are getting married, they forget boundaries. And so you've got to constantly remind your clients what your expectations are. And so, for example, you know, when I meet with people, I tell them like, you're going to, you're probably going to see me four times and this is what you need me for logistics, design, um, priorities and budget and the final timeline, everything else behind the scenes, that's someone else that handles that. Um, she answers emails, she deals with the money, and letting people know that we're a team it has never lost us any business, ever. I mean, cultivating a relationship is really, really important, but it's never done anything bad for us. And so one of my coaches actually taught me this years ago to keep on using the word team, team, team. And so now just about every single thank you note or thank you email or rave we get on wedding wire wherever it is it always consistently says team because I can't do all this by myself and if, if I tried it would be a disaster like I, I'm just a girl with some ideas without my team and my vendors in place so again making sure that you are adapting to the changes that you want to take and set goals like you've got to set goals because if you don't set goals then and you don't write it down or type it out or take lipstick and put it on your mirror. If you don't set goals, nothing's going to change. It's like losing weight. 
when people say, oh, I'm on a diet, I'm counting my calories, I got a trainer, um, and they do it for a month, and they don't, then they don't lose any weight, but they don't change their eating patterns. You know, you know how that goes. We've all been there. Um, but it's the same thing in business. You've got to stick to it in order to implement change. All right, tip seven. So y'all know that I use a lot of software and a lot of apps, and by doing so, it saves us, again, so much time. It saves me so much money and paying other people to do things for me. Um, and again, it's I don't mind spending a little bit of money because it goes a long way, and again, it saves a ton of time, and it frees up my time so that I can triage my emails. And so before we... Um, jump in I'm gonna show you guys some things I wanna share a case study with you because this is actually kinda of crazy um, and I've been using Samebox for literally years in fact one of my best friends Blake Chaffin he owns the lighting company that lights all of our events he told me he's he knows I'm a priority and productivity queen and he's like Ange there's this thing that I found that somebody else told him about and he's like, it pops up in your inbox and like where your folders are. And um, you just, you drag things to it and it's so much more easy and it helps me pro. And he was talking about it and talking about it. And then I think one day we got like 600 something emails in a day. And I'm like, okay, I really need to take five minutes and sign up for this program and try it and see if it's going to make a difference for us. And it, it made a huge, huge, huge difference. And I don't know what kind of um, program you're using to pull all your emails in. Uh, one of the girls that works with me, her sister, which I sent this to you guys in one of the emails, like had six different tabs opened up on her computer. And the, she's like, what are you doing? Why don't you pull all, all of your email addresses into one like software? You've got a Mac. Why are you not using Mac mail? And she just didn't know, and so she said it. She probably took thirty minutes and set it up for her. And yeah, you got to know your username and passwords and all that. But then everything came into like one area, and she's like, "Oh my gosh, like this is amazing!" And then a week later, she's like, "This is amazing! Like I didn't know." And so we have, I personally have six email addresses, and they're all mapped totally differently. And so one of them is to clients, four clients, and. Those emails um, go to me and to my assistant, and mainly that's her inbox. Like I just have it just in case she's on vacation or she's sick or, you know, those things that we we have each other's back. That's just how we work. Um, and then I have a personal email that I don't really use or check that much, but you know I have it for like my nieces and nephews' birthday parties and and workout to go to the gym and you know stuff like that. Um, and then I have my social media email address and all, I mean, there's so many social media platforms now. And so having an email address that is specific to just your social media is really, really helpful because then you can really help prioritize your spam. And, um, then I have an email for trade shows. So when I meet vendors and I sign up for their coupons or their newsletters, like I do want those things. And this is what Sanebox has really helped me with. And the, uh, the last email that I have for newsletters is I have a, a lot of friends who do a lot of newsletters and the information is sometimes valuable, but sometimes they just send too much crap. And that sounds so bad. And I don't want to unsubscribe. And so I drag it, the emails, to same black hole, meaning, you know, just goes into the black hole and then you never see it again and you never uh, unsubscribe. I actually have a friend who works with a third-party company that purchases emails mm -hmm. from companies that where people unsubscribe because they know you're a real person. It's The industry is very, very crazy. Um, so check this out. So every week from Sanebox, we get a dashboard email telling us how many hours we saved, how many emails we sent, um, and then making sure that all the emails are mapped appropriately. And so I'm not like a big analytics numbers person. Like I have someone that works with me who oversees all that, but whenever um, Allison pointed this out to me, she's like, oh my God, we sent almost 7,000 emails out last week, which 
that it wasn't last week. This this was a couple months ago. I think we had multiple events going on that week. And so we actually had a client that emailed us and said, hey, did you get my email yesterday? It's like it hasn't even been 24 hours. Like, chill out. Your wedding's not for 15 months. And so to be kind of funny, um, you know, I posted this on social media. Like, hey, if you thought we fell off the face of the earth in the last, like, week, um, this is why. Like, we're, we're very busy. And so then it, like, ranks your friends. And you can see, like, over here on the left, it says that I put 34 annoying emails straight to trash. And so there's some spam that, like, you just can't get rid of. So I love looking at this, and I love telling people about this. Um, and then also in that dashboard, it will list out the emails that we trained. And so, for instance, if a new vendor emails me and I've never received an email from, from them before, it can go into the same later box and then obviously I mean, we check it once a day and then you can drag it to whichever inbox you want it to be in so it, we've never missed an email again like this has just been the most awesome product for us all right Dimitri jump in and tell us all more about SaneBox and how they can crush email sure thing um all right, let's uh, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I think we we touched on a lot of this already, so we're not no need to go too much in depth. But you know, why we started the, the company uh, six years ago is you know the volume of emails keeps growing. Um, so an average professional, which means pretty much anyone with a desk job, any well anyone whose job involves a laptop, <laughs> it gets about one one fifty emails per day and spends. Uh, almost a third of their time uh, just in this kind of reactive mode of just replying to stuff in your inbox. And by the way, uh, so this is uh, really fresh off the press. I, uh, I we just ran the numbers um, uh, yesterday on what the per what's the percentage of important emails versus noise. And it's a really interesting chart. It just steadily keeps going up and to the right over the years. So four years ago, um, I think, 58% uh, of emails were not important, and now it's 65. So it's the, the, the volume of noise uh, just keeps getting worse and worse. And the real problem is that because we were kind of stuck in this jail, our, um, you know, it, it, it affects everything. It affects our uh, emails become our to-do list. It kind of derails our focus and actually affects our mood um, and just kind of in general how we feel. Next. So yeah, why is this uh, <laughs> why is it, why is this a problem? Um, our brains are um, you know, and, and to kind of to Angel to your point about you know training your brain, um, it's wired for this kind of distraction. And the, the reason it's wired for this is uh, you know if you think back to the you know when we were when we were hunting uh, on the savanna somewhere, uh, it was really important to pay attention to the surroundings and to make sure like a, a lion doesn't jump out and try to eat us. Right? So so we are very, very um, biologically wired for distractions. And so uh, they've done studies on um, a back place. Um, they've done studies on, on rats uh, where they uh, essentially have two, group, two groups of rats. One group had a lever in their, in their cage and it was a, it was a fixed reward system, meaning um, if the rat pressed the, the lever uh, four times, five times, ten times, whatever, some consistent number, uh, they would get a treat. And then the other group was a um, variable reward system, meaning it was a completely random number of pushes. Um, on the lever that would give the treat. And so essentially kind of like a slot machine. And so that second group, the slot machine group was way more addicted to pressing the lever uh, than the first group. And so the, the same, same goes for us. Uh, we have, um, uh, anytime you open your inbox, it could be, you know, it could be a really good email, right? It could be like a, a new client. It could be uh, something really uh, interesting or, or valuable. 99% of the time, that's not the case but still we want to check it. And, and the, the other thing is there's a completion bias. So uh, cleaning out your inbox and deleting emails feels uh, productive, right? It feels like you're doing something. Uh, but in reality, all you've done is um, just did a, a bunch of nonsense, reactive stuff that's not part of your job description. Next. 
Yeah, and so this is uh, <laughs> this is what ends up happening um, when you are you know kind of in this reactive mode when you're uh, dealing with your inbox. Um, we are basically multitasking, and there's a ton of studies done now on why multitasking just doesn't work, and uh, it, it, it reactively you're like zero tasking. <laughs> so. So uh, what we when we started the company uh, years ago, what we, what we first noticed is that um, there is a group of people that is very very good at processing their email. And what's, what was also interesting is those people got way more, um, like ten times more email than uh, everyone else. So our early customers were uh, there were a lot of entrepreneurs, VCs, uh, very public people who get a thousand emails a day. And so what we try to figure out is what, what is it about these folks that's, um, that's different? And how do they, um, you know, what, why can they do it and the rest of us can't? And so what we came up with is um, these three email commandments. And these are kind of just the overarching principles behind uh, successful email management that, that we've seen you know, work really well. So let's go with the first one. Um, so the first one is uh, it's a kind of a realization that email is like Tetris. No matter how good you are at playing the game, uh, more emails will keep coming, and um, the volume of emails keeps growing every year, and the volume of unimportant emails keeps growing every year. So eventually, you will lose. Right? Eventually, you'll the, uh, everybody loses the game. And so the the solution is you have to change the way you think about it. Um, you cannot beat the game at its own rules, and so what you have to do is change the way you kind of change the way you think about email. Uh, you have to change the you know, change your process or, or create a process if you don't have one and we'll talk about that next and then last but not least um, you need the right tools and so this is where um, sandbox comes in so commandment number two is probably the most important takeaway uh, from from our, at least our our part for too many of us email has become kind of the default the uh, the unconscious number one priority so you wake up in the morning, you look in your inbox, you get to the office, open up your laptop, and you start doing email. And the real issue here is that your email is a to-do list that other people write on. Right. So um, when you are kind of unconsciously um, treating email as your top priority, essentially you're treating other people's priorities as your number one priority. And the real solution to this is um, what we call scan, block, ask. So scan your email for important and urgent items when you, whenever you, you, whenever you're online, and then close your inbox. And you can do this because at the same time you, you need to block uh, thirty to you know thirty minute, one hour, two hour, whatever, three hour slots on your calendar for email time. So and again, it can be whatever time do you, whatever amount of time you need. Um, Kind of depending on your uh, your volume, uh, but the key is by scheduling this time, you're putting email in its place. You're prioritizing it among your priorities. And then, so last but not least, whenever you kind of get stuck doing email, just ask yourself if uh, that's the best use of your time right now. Right? And most of the time, the answer probably will be no. Uh, but you know, eventually, you do need to kind of clear it out. But uh, again. The key is kind of consciously, mindfully asking yourself, "Hey, is this is this is this the most important thing for me right now?" Oh, nope. Can I have a number three, please. Yep. Um, so, when when you are in that email time uh, time slot, um, the next trick that the brain plays on us is um, kind of this uh, again this unconscious. Um, uh, idea that all emails are created equal. Uh, the the trick here is that every email interface, webmail, you know, client, phone, gives the same amount of space on the screen to each email. And so, um, to our brains, an email from your most important customer looks the same as uh, an email from your you know or like a newsletter you never read. Uh, and once you analyze it, yes, it, it, it's clear, but it does take those kind of precious uh, processing power cycles to figure it out. And really, there are three kinds of emails. There are unimportant, and this is the stuff that you need to just delete or archive in bulk. Then there's important and urgent, 
And these are the ones you can uh, you know, need, need to deal with right now. And then there's important, not urgent. And this is the stuff you can deal with later. And again, it's really important to think about these three buckets uh, differently. Next, please. So inbox zero is a, uh, it's a little bit of a, mis well, can't find the right word. Um, it, it's a little bit of a misconception. Most people think that inbox zero is a kind of a, the act of having no emails in your inbox, but really it's a process uh, to consistently have no emails in your inbox. Next. Next. Uh, and it's uh, based on this idea of um, triage. So triage is a, is a medical concept that was developed um, during the Napoleonic Wars, and it's still the way uh, patients are treated in the hospitals. Uh, and essentially there are, there are three kinds of uh, patients and there are three kinds of emails. Let's go to the next one, please. Um, there are three kinds of emails. There's noise. These are emails that, you know, that's that unimportant bucket that doesn't need to be, um, it just doesn't matter. Um, there's the quick fix. This is stuff that can be dealt with um, very quickly. And then the, lastly, there's needs work. So this is the, uh, the emails that require actual time to process. Uh, can you? So each of these three groups, um, there, there is a corresponding action according to the inbox zero methodology. So the noise is uh, delete or archive. So again, that's, that's your unimportant stuff that uh, the key here is to delete it in bulk or archive in bulk, whatever you want to, uh, doesn't matter what you do, but the, the key is it should not be in your inbox. Uh, next is um, if you can quickly within under two minutes, um, figure out if this, if you should defer, meaning snooze, uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, delegate, meaning forward, and respond, which is you know, respond, <laughs> um, just do it now. That, that's the quick, kind of the quick action. And if you do the, uh, those four steps, or those four actions, the only, the only action left will be the do uh, bucket. And these are the emails you'll, you will deal with today. And, um, the, the kind of the overarching theme here is never touch an email twice. So, you know, keeping the, the email in your inbox and, and continuing to look at it every time you, uh, you open your computer is not the right, is, is not one of the options here. So it's delete, de de defer, delegate, respond, or do. Those are the only five options for you. And so, um, next please. Yep. Um, we'll, so we built Sanebox uh, with this methodology in mind. And so, um, there's, by the way, there's a lot of other features. There's a lot of customization you can do, but we, we won't talk about all that today. Uh, we'll just talk about kind of how to uh, how to process your inbox most effectively uh, with Sanebox. So, um, delete or archive. Um, we have um, the same later. So essentially, when you first sign up for Sanebox, uh, what we do is we analyze how you interact with your inbox. We look at what emails you open, what emails you respond to, how quickly. You open, how quickly you respond, how often, um, you know, how far back the relationship goes, and so on and so on. And based on this, we we'll know what you consider important. And if it's not, if it's something that's not important, we move it out of your inbox into this new folder that we create called same layer. And that's a normal folder like any other folder um, in your email. So it, it works. Uh, yeah, same box works with any email setup: um, Gmail, Outlook, uh, you know, Apple Mail, you name it. Any email provider, any email client, uh, any device. Uh, just because all, everything we do is a simple folder. And so, what, what you can do is go through this folder, the, the same later folder. You know, once it, I do it probably twice a day, and just kind of quickly scan to see if something is caught in the, you know, something's in the wrong place. And then I just drag. If it's if something is in the wrong place, I can simply move it out of my inbox into same later, or vice versa, to train us to immediately train the system of what you like to see where. Um, if you never want to hear from a sender again, and this uh, Angela talk kind of touched on this, uh, we have this feature called same black hole. And black hole is a uh, full, so it's, if you move an email into this folder, all future emails from that sender will just go straight to trash. So it's kind of like unsubscribing, but just faster and, and easier. And like I, like I said, you can customize uh, the heck out of it. There's a lot, a lot more options that you could uh, that you could do. Uh, so the defer bucket, um, we, we have a couple of different options for you. 
the, the easiest, um, we call them snooze folders. So you can drag an email into a folder called tomorrow, and it's going to pop back in your inbox tomorrow morning. If you drag an email into a folder called next week, it's going to pop back in your inbox on Monday morning, and you can, they can create custom ones. Um, now, same reminders. Um, when you forward an email or send an email or reply to an email, uh, and you want to make sure that you hear back from that person, um, all you need to do is add in the CC or BCC, add uh, three days at sandbox.com or um, Monday 9 a.m. at sandbox.com or April 25th um, at sandbox.com. And what we'll do is we'll monitor whether or not you got a response. And if you did get a response, um, then nothing happens. If you did not get a response to your emails, then you'll get a reminder to follow up in your inbox at that time. So again, if you CC or BCC um, one week at samebox.com, and if you do, and you don't hear back within that one week, we'll send you a reminder. So it's kind of like a really lightweight CRM right in your inbox. <laughs> um, and then, so la as I mentioned, last but not least, uh, the do bucket. Uh, we can't help you do actual work, but the good news is if you do these four steps, um, the only emails left in your inbox will be the ones that you will deal with today. And then at the end, uh, my personal favorite hack is to take everything and move it into a um, the tomorrow folder, and I finish my day with inbox zero. Next morning, everything that's left it is you know pops back in, but I it's really good for my sanity to uh, <laughs> to have zero emails in my inbox uh, when I finish the day. All right, so that that was the. And the overarching principles and uh, how to how to generally use uh, most of our fee or our, our most basic features. Now we'll talk about just really quick email hacks. So these are quick tips that you can start um, using today to be better at email. Um, my one of my personal favorites is if you're if you're if there's an action item or the email is longer. Uh, Highlight the keywords or takeaways in bold. Just simply bold the most important part of the email. Uh, it's better than putting putting it in all caps. All caps is kind of like yelling, um, but uh, if you bold an email, it will just make you a re much more efficient communicator and it will make the recipient's job much easier. Next. Um, so this is important. Um, this actually doesn't have much to do with email, but um, you know, having a, an important password for your email is probably the most important password out there. Um, a lot of people have the same password for every service they use, and so when there's and it usually an, <laughs> ends up being a very very easy to guess password. And so if one of those services or websites gets hacked, uh, then all of your sites got hacked. And that happens way more often than you think. It actually happened to an acquaintance of mine uh, last week. Um, literally all of her social media got hacked. And she was kind of a, she's an influencer, so she has a, a lot of followers. And uh, it was highly, highly unpleasant uh, experience for her followers and for her, most importantly. So um, the, yeah, so one password is a you know everyone at Sandbox uses one password. And there's a couple of other options, and then um, I know Angela, you want to talk about the one password really quick, but I want to I want to touch on why Michael Jackson is here. Um, so the the fr this bunch of letters you see in, on the slide is Billie Jean is not my lover; she's just a girl who claims that I am the one, and that's just an example of what you can do. So essentially, you think of a phrase that you know by heart. Ideally, it's not a well-known phrase. So ideally, it's something that that you know, and just start start typing the first letter of, of each word as you're saying it, and that becomes your password. So you don't have to memorize the password. It's, you already know it. Um, and it's, you know, as you can see, it's very, very long. It's very hard to guess. Uh, at trying to add capitalization or numbers into it is very important. And um, yeah, and, and then, so if that's, if that's your password for your 1Password app, um, then you're pretty safe. Yeah, so whenever I was going through this presentation, um, another app that I'm very passionate about is definitely 1Password because I've had my identity literally stolen three times. Third time is a charm, 
um, because I was that girl. Like I used the same password over and over or I just kept adding a one and I would use my dog's names and there was nothing secure and nothing encrypted. And several years ago, um, the third time it happened, my bank, I'm friends with the guy that works there and he's like, you know, you should really look into this. Like you're doing more work with more people and dealing with a lot of confidential information. And so I actually talked with someone that the bank recommended and it was a guy who was in jail because he was a hacker and he was telling me um, ways that I could like do passwords similar to the Michael Jackson thing but saying like if it's Amazon do like the first two letters and then use four numbers that you know might mean something to you and then the last four um, two letters of whatever website but I'm like I have hundreds especially as a designer we have hundreds of passwords for vendors that we use and so eh, knock on wood ever since I've used one password um, the way that it encrypts everything, not only your passwords, but it does your credit cards, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful app that that keeps up with everything. And one more little tip, I used to use Keychain for some of this stuff, and then I had to reset my computer one day, and as I'm hitting enter, the girl on the phone with Apple, she's like, oh, one thing, uh, it, it, when, you, when you hit enter, like, it's going to... Um, you're going to lose everything in Keychain. I'm like, great. So I just lost all my passwords. So I don't rely on Keychain or Google Chrome or Safari or any of those third parties to save my passwords. I always hit no um, and I put everything in one password. All right. So this is a big one. Um, I'm very guilty of hitting send and then regretting it immediately. Um, I'm just quick, quick fingers. Um, the the thing that saves me is Gmail um, a Gmail feature called undo send. You can enable it in Gmail very quickly. Just go to your settings. Very easy. And essentially, it kind of waits on sending and on actually sending the email for about up to thirty seconds after you hit send, so you can click undo. Um, but really, the simple solution to this is um, if it's an important email, just don't enter the email address until you're done, until you know you are proofread the email, until you're really ready. Uh, you can always add the recipient's name later. You're not going to forget it. So that's a very quick, uh, simple one. Um, this is a big one, too. A lot of our, you know, we see this with our customers as well. Um, people kind of, do, you know, deal with their emails and they just leave them in their inbox. Um, and essentially, your, your inbox you know, has thousands of emails, and it's stuff that's processed, right? It's stuff that you've already dealt with, but it's just sitting there. And, and this is really the equivalent of um, to, you know opening up your physical mail, snail mail mailbox, um, you know, taking out the emails, or sorry, taking out the, the envelopes, uh, reading them, and you know dealing with, with what's needed, and then stuffing them back in uh, into your mailbox. And the, this is exactly the same thing. Your inbox is just meant for unprocessed incoming stuff that you haven't dealt with. So uh, it's important to, to kind of think of it correctly that way. So if you have a huge inbox uh, like that, uh, make a new folder. Call it old mail or you know, archive or something. And just move all that stuff in there. It's, it, it will be just as easily accessible, but you'll start with inbox zero, and it will be much easier to stay there. Um, subject. So um, use the subject wisely, I guess, is the, as, the, as the title says. So you can um, try to make it actionable, try to make it uh, specific and searchable, right, because uh, make it easier to find later. And then uh, using tags is really helpful. So if it's an urgent thing, put urgent or time sensitive. Um, if there's an action item in there, put action item. Um, if, um, if this is kind of a, more of an FYI email, um, try to put NNTR or NRN. That stands for no need to reply and no reply necessary. Um, that just kind of takes a lot of the stress um, off of the recipient's shoulders. Um, if you can fit the whole message in the subject line itself, um, kind of like a tweet, put EOM at the end. Uh, that stands for end of message. And, you know, the recipient knows that they don't need to, they don't need to click. Everything is right there. And my favorite is putting not urgent into the subject line. 
And so if it's an unurgent email, again, it just kind of removes stress uh, for the recipients. So we talked about our black hole feature, and the reason we built black hole is uh, we've seen a lot of people go on a on an unsubscribe binge and just go and you know unsubscribe from a bunch of newsletters, and what ends up happening more often than not is you end up with more junk. And this happens because you just by unsubscribing you're basically are kind of exposing yourself as number one a human and number two a human who cares about their email. Um, and so you, you become a, a spammer's dream come true, and so that even if you're unsubscribed, they might sell your address to someone else. So it's, uh, you're really relying on their integrity um, to not mess with you. And so the solution is, um, with the same black hole, uh, you just drag an email into that folder, and you'll never hear from that person again, but it, it just goes straight to your trash, so you can never uh, really you know, deal with it. Um, yeah, avoiding open-ended questions. So email is really, really great for uh, kind of like a multiple choice kind of a conversation. So if you think, you know, if you finish your emails with thoughts, question mark, then it's probably not a great email. Um, if it's a yes or no question or a multiple choice, that's just a way more efficient use of email. Uh, if it's more open-ended, it's probably a better conversation. And this is not really a tip, this is more of a uh, observation. So um, as, I, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we noticed that some of the people that get literally 10 times more email than the rest of us are also way better at dealing with it. They, you know, some of them, like there's this one uh, venture capitalist we know who replies to every email within minutes. And I, I mean, I don't understand how he does that, but, um, and, and, and plenty of others get to inbox zero every day, having received thousands of emails. And it's just, it's very simple. It's a, they have the right system, they use the right tools, and you know, many of them, so, so many of them use Sandbox, and they just think about it differently. So they have a different process um, for, for doing email. And so it's very, you know, it's possible, and it's actually not that difficult, but it does require you to potty train your brain, like re-potty train your brain. Um, yeah, thank you guys. That's uh, I think that's it for us. Yeah, and I love this. Productivity is really about what you do. And it's funny because a lot of people that I work with, they're, um, the way they start out some of their emails or their messages to me, they're like, I'm really sorry to bother you. In fact, I had an old broad text me this morning and she's like, I'm really sorry to bother you, but I have a question. It's like, why do people think they're bothering me? <laughs> like, they're not bothering me. Like my job is to connect people and to answer questions and triage questions and, um, you know, text have almost become as bad as emails, um, which I don't mind if it's like a one, you know, a yes, a simple yes or no kind of thing. Um, but also if my team needs to know what's going on, it needs to come through the company email so that they know what's going on. And so, yes, we're busy. We're always busy. All of us are busy. But it's, are you busy doing what you want to be doing? Or are you busy, are you using your busyness in a productive way? And if you're just answering emails all day long, like a hamster on a wheel, um, you got to get help. And this is one of the ways that it can help. So um, SaneBox has offered to the listeners on the webinar that you can receive a $25 credit for listening to the webinar and learning about it. You do get a 14-day free trial, which, like I said years ago when I signed up for this, I tried it for 14 days, and then I thought, oh my gosh, I have to have this. I can't live without it. Um, more so for, like, the sane black hole. Like, it gets hundreds of things that just go into the trash um, per week. And it is, even though we're just hitting delete, like someone messaged me on Facebook about this webinar and she's like, oh, I just hit delete, I just hit delete. And I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe you're not as busy as you wanna be with your clients, but when you get a thousand emails a day, you've got to have a process in place. You've gotta to start to learn how to triage because if 500 of that is trash, you don't need to be sitting there hitting delete 500 times. Um, and so again, I mean, email is super important. It's without email, I wouldn't have an effective business and I couldn't operate business on an, an effective manner. 
um, but you've got to get on with your life. And so to me, it's it's priceless. Um, but make sure you take down this link, and if you want to sign up for the 14-day trial, use sanebox.com slash Angela Profit. My name with two F's and two T's, so you get the $25 discount when you go to sign up. Um, if you dis decide to get, it's a subscription based service and to me it's priceless. It's super crazy cheap, like seven bucks a month if you want priority filtering, which that's super important to me. The replies, you know, the reminders, um, <laughs> it's cute how they say snack, lunch, dinner. Um, you know, people will say like, I'll eat you for dinner. I've heard a few mad people say that <laughs> around me before. Um, but I mean, to me, I think we just pay for this annually, like every year and you get a, a savings if, if you pay yearly, um, because it, it's something again, <clears throat> I can't live without, <laughs> I would be heartbroken if, if same later went away. And we, we mainly use same later, same black coal. Um, we haven't used the reminders so much. We use Wonderlist for that, but it is something that we're going to try because I know it's a feature that we have. Um, and just a little bit, like, saying later has been used by so many play, like companies that we all know. Um, you can see on here, you know, Inc.com, Entrepreneur.com. I'm really big into TechCrunch with technology, PC Magazine, Fortune. Los Angeles Time, Lifehacker, Fox, and so many huge companies use this to triage their inboxes. And so if these large companies are using it, you know one reason that these companies are so successful. They have hundreds and thousands of employees, and if they're giving them the right tools to make sure that they're using their time in a productive way, that helps them be successful. <clears throat> And so a couple of questions that, um, and these are actually on their website, but you know, the best things in life, like they're not free and sometimes they're hard to find. And so SaneBox is not free. Um, it is a product that a lot of time and money has been put into to follow the algorithms and do the data output and something that's great. Like they never sell your data. They're not going to show you ads. Um, you know, they have to earn your trust because security is a top priority. And that's probably one of the reasons mentioning one password and security is so, so important. And again, I just want to reiterate, like it saves so much time. And to me, it's like the best money that I've ever spent. Um, you know, again, the average employee spends 28% of their time, like just processing the emails. That's like 650 hours a year, which is crazy. That, that's just crazy. Um, so what that means is if, you know, you earn $30,000 a year, same box can save you $1,500. So even at $7 a month or, you know, paying for the monthly subscription, it's worth, you, you, it's worth so much. And if you're a, a one man show in business, um, you know, the young people say your time is money. And so you really, really have to learn how to prioritize your time. And then as you grow your business and you're able to add people to your team, they will adopt the same traits and habits that you have. So like whenever I started my internship program and I was answering emails at two and three in the morning, I noticed that like my interns started to do it. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. Um, so you have to lead by example. And then SaneBox to me, um, it's much better than smart folders or Gmail tabs. It's it's way way better and way smarter. Before I knew about Sane Later, I used to use the spam filters through Gmail and then um, Network Solutions host our email. And this hands down is the best thing that actually works. And like the spammers, they don't get through once we put them to Sane Black Hole. And so just a, a few other um, companies like Business Insider, I don't know if you guys read that, but I, I do, Forbes, TechCrunch, Tony Robbins, which if you don't know who Tony is, he's a great leader in the entrepreneurial space. Um, and if you read what he says, you know, he thinks that saying later is amazing too. Like I can't even imagine 
Um, I mean, he teaches thousands and thousands of people at his conferences. I can't even imagine how many emails he must get. Um, I'm sure he has multiple people answering them for him, but again, equipping them with the right tools to make sure their time is being productive is super important too. So this is a fun fact. Whenever I was looking at the website and I saw Tony, I was like, oh, this is, this is funny. I actually did an article with um, Success Magazine last year about modernizing our industry in the wedding industry and how we have started to use technology and applications and software to stay up with the times. And um, I didn't get to pick the title or anything, but I'm like, oh, modernizing an industry better known for tool than tech. Like, I don't really use tool. I was kind of mortified by that title, but that's okay. That's not the point. Um, but we actually were using the same branding manager at the time, and he said, I didn't know that you had an article in Success Magazine, and Tony's on the front. I'm like, well, I didn't know that Tony's on. It was just, it was, it was just funny. So um, we both love, love, love saying later. And um, so we'll take questions now, and I'm going to leave this up. So if you guys want to take a picture of the screen or jot down the links to break out of email jail, go to sanebox.com slash Angela Profit. And then for your free gift, staying for the whole time, one of Amazon's eBooks on bestsellers, that's the link to get hacks that SaneBox can help you with. Um, so thank you so, so much for attending and try out SaneBox. If you have any questions, like feel free to reach out to me. I would say email me <laughs> um, and let me know if you have any questions. My email's connect at angelaprofit.com. And a couple questions that um, came in. Someone asked about using Myers-Briggs for a personality test. And I do like Myers-Briggs. Um, it's not as much of a, a team it's it's like sit at a computer and answer questions and then get your your feedback and you know you got to learn to read it and implement it and so it's def definitely good but some more advanced psychology methodologies that we use like I said true colors and then another one is how to fascinate um, Sally this lady came up with 49 archetypes and that's one that we have been using to grow our team as well um, let's see there's some more questions on here. Someone asked, can I see this information on a website? I have to leave for an urgent meeting. Well, I'll send out the, the recording of it so you can, can watch the rest of it, definitely. Um, and several people said, thanks so much. This is super, super helpful. Um, so somebody that was in my Memphis class last week said, you talked about business card apps. Oh, a business card, card much is good. Demetri, do you know of any good apps that work to take pictures of business cards? No, I stopped caring about business cards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, my software, Infusionsoft, has Snap, which automatically goes into my software. Um, what are the three top apps and software you prefer? Well, well, obviously, Samebox is, is one of them. We love Wonderlist. That's a free app. It's like a to-do list. But I think um, with, with saying later, I'm gonna, we're going to try to use those reminders as well because I feel like we have a babysitting list constantly for people oh, yeah. that haven't gotten back to us. And um, when people are like, what do y'all do? We're like, oh, we're glorified babysitters half the time, um, which is really sad because um, we could be doing something else with our time. And another, well, I love Infusionsoft. My software is great. It's, it's hard to use, and I have people that help me use it and code the campaigns and all that. But if you guys want to learn more on that, let me know. Um, somebody said, just signed up. Thanks so much. A couple people said that they signed up. So any other questions, do shoot me an email. I will respond to you and answer your questions. Demetri, do you have any more last thoughts before we jump off? No, thank you for having me. This was great. Of course. Thank you so much for reaching out. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your week and have a great weekend.